You've probably heard of the Wright brothers, pioneers of aviation. But as they were trying to get their rickety airplane into the sky in 1903, animals were already soaring high. How come we don't know more about the first winged creatures? After all, life on Earth started its journey underwater. Taking to the skies was a huge evolutionary leap. The full history of airborne animals doesn't include a single species. If you look out the window, you'll see birds flapping their feathered wings, as well as insects buzzing around. The structure of their wings is not the same. At night, you might notice a bat whiz in the dark. Its wings don't look like the ones a dove or a bee has. Finally, you've probably seen in a natural history museum what a pterodactyl used to look like. The flying reptile that once ruled our planet's skies had bones in its wings. Insects, birds, pterosaurs, and bats – four species with four different wing structures. The first group that took into the air were the insects. In the early decades of the 20th century, scientists discovered a fossil in Scotland. They soon identified it as one of the earliest flying insects. The issue with the find is that researchers have only unearthed the head of the animal. Some scholars believe that the remains could belong to a centipede. It lived in the Devonian period, some 400 million years ago. Fossils of insects from this time in the history of the Earth are quite rare. This was the age of fishes, when prehistoric animals were just starting to explore dry land. Scientists agree that around this time, insects mastered the art of flying. They developed wings at the time when land plants started growing taller, forming the first forests. These primeval flyers resemble today's dragonflies. The true origins of their wings was a mystery for biologists for over a century. They didn't develop from arms. It seems that when crustaceans – crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and the like – ventured onto land, they needed extra support to hold their bodies. The animal's leg segment first retracted back and then moved to its back. From there, it got the shape we all recognize today – wings. Insects inhabit all seven continents and boast over 10 million living species. The development of wings enabled their population to take off, quite literally. Other animals were looking from below at these delicious pieces of protein buzzing around. The next animals that took to the skies were dinosaurs. This occurred some 175 million years after insects mastered flight. The pterodactyl was the biggest animal that ever flew. The largest specimens were the size of a Cessna airplane. It had a wingspan of 40 feet. There were, in total, 120 subspecies of pterosaurs. Some were the size of a sparrow. Scientists believe that the species used its long claws to scale trees. They developed their wings when hopping from one tree to another. At first, this was a smooth glide. There's a theory that they flapped their rudimentary wings to grab onto the trunk of a tree. All this flapping eventually led to the development of full-scale wings. The animal had strong muscles, but its bones were eggshell thin and hollow. This super lightweight construction was perfect for soaring high. A pterosaur just had to open its wings and the wind would do the rest. Birds seem to have picked up on this brilliant design. The first of them was Archaeopteryx, which was a feathered dinosaur. Paleontologists discovered its fossil in Bavaria in 1861. They dated it back to the late Jurassic epoch, around 150 million years ago. The animal possessed a mixture of reptilian and bird-like features. It had wings with feathers, teeth, and a bony tail. Researchers believe it flew differently than birds do today. It would flap its wings in short bursts, something like a human swimmer does during the butterfly stroke. A more recent find offers better insight into the evolution of birds. In 2007, a farmer in China stumbled upon a fossil that, apparently, belonged to a strange-looking dinosaur. It ended up in a museum, where scientists solved the mystery. The pigeon-sized animal was a close relative to the earliest birds. It existed some 9 million years before the Archaeopteryx. They named it Jishi, which translated from Mandarin as strange wing. The name suited the animal perfectly. It had bat-like membranes that acted as wings. During the 2000s, similar fossils started popping up. But Jishi had an incredible level of preservation, with some soft tissue elements still visible. 
Its wing membrane was attached by a rod-like structure to the animal's wrist bone. This structural support wasn't used for climbing trees, but for flying. Another fossil found in China in 2019 further supported this theory. Researchers were dealing with an entirely different way dinosaurs experimented with flight. Now, don't think of an eagle soaring in the sky. These early creatures were only capable of short-term and awkward gliding from one tree to another. They didn't get a chance to develop their flying skills because the age of the dinosaurs ended 66 million years ago. The asteroid that fell in present-day Mexico gave the birds the opportunity to populate the skies. The secret behind their success is the way their bodies are adapted for flight. Like the pterosaurs, they have hollow bones that make them lightweight. But the way they breathe is what's truly amazing. Humans breathe in and breathe out. In our case, air moves both ways. In birds, air moves only in one direction. The oxygen they breathe in travels to air sacs located around their lungs. When birds exhale, oxygen moves inside the lungs. The end result is lungs that are never empty of oxygen. This allows the animal to soar to reach great heights. Humans can't breathe without an oxygen mask at elevations greater than 40,000 feet. That's why climbers who want to ascend Mount Everest take oxygen tanks with them. A griffin vulture, the highest soaring bird on the planet, doesn't need any extra gear to reach altitudes of 37,000 feet. Impressive, isn't it? But birds don't have the skies all for themselves. Pterosaurs might be out of the picture today, but bats aren't. They can reach altitudes of just over 5,000 feet. Apart from their ability to fly, the two species are completely unrelated. Bats got their start some 52 million years ago. The oldest fossil we have was that of a clawed bat. The name comes from the fact that it had claws on all five fingers. Modern bats only have two claws on each wing. Scientists believe these ancient bats used their claws to climb trees. They even speculate that the animal walked on all fours when on the ground. The bat's flying technique is unique when compared to birds. The wing of a bat consists of skin membranes that are stretched between fingers. They are attached near the animal's ankle, so this type of wing is more flexible than a bird's. Bats can twist their wings into many shapes. That's why they're so agile in the air at night. This makes sense because they hunt insects. The ability to maneuver in the air is crucial to a bat landing its meal. That's a figure of speech since bats consume their prey mid-air. Talk about eating on the fly. Going back to birds, their feathered wings seem normal to us. But they are actually a marvelous piece of animal engineering. The famous Italian inventor Leonardo da Vinci made over 200 drawings and sketches in the 15th century to illustrate his theories of flight. The inspiration for most of them came from birds. His design of an ornithopter was an aircraft that would fly by flapping its wings, something that comes naturally to birds. Da Vinci never built this contraption, but today we fly in planes that borrow their design from the way birds move smoothly through the air. The most recent example is the addition of winglets to jetliners' wings. They help to reduce drag. Engineers got the idea from gliding birds that curl up their wings to improve flight efficiency.